everybody. In this video, I will present you the control structures that are available in Swift. The goal of control structures is to, according to manipulated data, control the execution of your programs. So Swift offers very classical structures like ifs and else, loops, and switch. So we just have a very quick look at these from the syntactical point of view because at this stage I believe that you already know the semantics of such instructions. So let's go through the example. It's quite simple. So here uh, it's still on my playground so you can try it and play with it. Uh, I have a variable here. Uh, I compare this variable to uh, an immediate value and then I print. So if this text is verified then uh, I do uh, print uh, the uh, then part, otherwise I do execute the else part. You will notice that there is no need for parentheses in the test because in Swift you are obliged to open and close brackets for the if, if any, and for the else, if any. Okay, so it means that there is no ambiguity to detect where the sequence of instruction if the test is verified starts. Okay, so it's a, it's a little bit like ELA and not like uh, for example uh, C. And you can uh, cascade uh, the uh, if and then etc etc uh, this way and in fact you saw you have a sort of else if okay uh, which uh, uh, exist as a single instruction in several languages. Uh, okay, so you can play and check that these instructions correspond to this execution in the playground. You have enumerative loops. Uh, enumerative loops, okay, uh, typically here uh, I can state that I want i to go from 1 to 5. Which is interesting is these enumerative loops got a lot of inspiration from EDA and EDA is a language that is known for being quite safe uh, in terms of uh, typing and what it takes from EDA is I is implicitly declared it exists only between this opening bracket and this closing uh, bracket and you can only read I you cannot change the value of I I will successively for every occurrence of the loop body takes the value 1, 2, 3, etc. up to 5, so this is an interval, but you will never be able in the body of a loop to change the value of i, and that's quite safe, so it's why we call it enumerative loop. The interval for uh, the index, high here, uh, is not only an integer, it can be an enumerated type, it can also be the content of an array, so then your for becomes an iterator and we saw those in a previous video when presenting the arrays and you have similar things here with dictionaries okay so you can check that this piece of code correspond to this execution on the playground. You also have while loops and while loops have the test either before the body of the loop or at the end of the body of the loop. Okay, so here there is an example when the test is before. Okay, so it's while and then you have no ambiguity because you are forced to open and close the block as for the ifs, so there is no ambiguity, so no need for parentheses in the uh, definition of the, the test and here uh, you have the same thing okay you do repeat while and then you have your condition so you can uh, check that this piece of code provides this execution. Now let's come to the switch. Uh, the switch is uh, quite interesting so let's have a simple type, here I have an enumerated type and once again the switch brings some features from ELA. Uh, in fact uh, here okay uh, I have a variable p, 
which is of type terrestrial. And uh, I want to compare, and I have two cases. The first case is the value Earth. And if it's Earth, I can print, I can live in it. If it's Mars, I print it's really too cold. And here I have the default. And the default, of course, as in uh, many languages, corresponds to all the possible values that have not been listed before the default. Important thing. Here, the default guarantees that we cover Earth, Mars, and all the other values. Let's imagine that I replace default by case.mercury, and I forgot Venus. Then, this switch will not compile because you have to cover all the possible values of this expression in the list of cases. Okay, of course, default must be the last one, and uh, default allow you to cover all these values. But there is a check. It means that, for example, if I have not default, I have a type uh, that is an interval between, uh, for example, uh, Mercury, Venus, and Earth. So let's imagine that you have a first version of the type that is just Mercury, Venus, and Earth. And here you have Earth, Mercury, and Venus. Then you add Mars. And you forgot to add Mars on this switch. Then the, compi the compiler will, will uh, complain and will not let you execute your program. So it's, uh, consider it as being a security instead than a constraint. Okay, so as you see, it's quite simple. Uh, all these notions are found in other pre-existing languages. So in fact, uh, it's difficult to invent new structures. They are just brought together in an elegant manner, but uh, nothing more. It's interesting because this language considers feedback from safe programming. Uh, strong typing, dynamic typing from function language, we'll see that later, sound syntax with no ambiguity, like the, it's not necessary, for example, to put parentheses in a test uh, of a loop or of uh, if then else, etc., etc. And in fact, uh, this leads to safe structures. Everything is surrounded by begin block and block. Uh, the covering of uh, types in switches, etc., etc. The protection of indexes in enumerative loops, etc., etc. So all of these that do not exist in the numerous languages make the language much safer. And in fact, if you consider, uh, for example, Java, uh, Java now has considerably evolved since it was introduced in the 90s, okay? And progressively, Java introduced such features too. And if you also see uh, new languages like C Sharp, etc., etc., there is a strong trend to introduce such constructions that are known now to be safer than uh, the traditional C-like way to write programs. For the rest, have a look at the fantastic module. Thank you very much for your attention. See you later. <laughs>